Is there a place in time where logic breaks down and wonderment begins? Could that be somewhere or sometime along an infinite line between the reasonable and the highly unlikely? Join us on a journey into the improbable. Today's story, episode 264, Breakwater. Read by Kathleen Connolly. Opening and closing theme by Matthew Erdman. Somewhere and sometime you might discover your memories have been altered. The setting sun brushed a soft line of pink along the snow-capped peak of the mountains on the opposite side of the valley from Arcology 1. Celeste and Eartha watched in silence until the mountaintops drained of color to become silhouettes against the darkening sky. There's snow again, Celeste noted anxiously. I went to the repository before we came here and loaded my sunset memories for the last 75 years. The snow is getting more frequent, especially in the last decade, but it's too soon for the climate to start cooling. Eartha shrugged. Maybe so, but it looks beautiful. Whether it's pretty or not misses the point, Celeste admonished. In the last few months, her lifelong friend had become increasingly apathetic to the importance of a stable environment. Like the sun on the mountain peaks, Eartha's memories of the past seem to have faded more than usual since the last restore. Just let yourself be in the present for once and enjoy it, Eartha encouraged. Sometimes the past is best left in the repository. No, we need it to keep us on the right track, Celeste objected sternly, like a grade school teacher correcting a problematic student. Even more so now, it feels like we're starting to forget faster. Maybe the memory re-imprinting isn't working as well as it used to. I'll need to talk to Casimir about that. When the lights from the other arcologies began to flicker on, Celeste turned away from the glass wall. The conservatory on the roof of Arcology 1 was her favorite place to view the mountains that cut breakwater off from the rest of the world. Her mother had financed and built its 12 self-contained arcologies as a refuge from the disastrous end of the 21st century. Come on, let's go to the other side to watch the stars come out. Celeste suggested, trying to change the subject. She led Eartha along a path that cut through the conservatory's overgrown garden. Two hundred-year-old banyan trees planted when breakwater had first been built hid the darkening sky, casting shadows so deep they had to almost feel their way through the artificial forest. Look, there's the Southern Cross, Celeste pointed out as they emerged into another observation area. It's like an old friend always there to help guide you. Eartha followed Celeste's gaze to a point in the sky where the first evening stars were beginning to glow. It'll be solstice in a month, which means founding day is coming soon, she remarked out of the blue. Are you reloading your mother's memories? Celeste was surprised by the question. Why wouldn't I? Founding day has always been about continuity, about remembering the plan mother laid out. It's kept us focused for two centuries. So you haven't heard the rumor? You mean Arcology 7's threat to open the wall at the end of the valley? Yes. That's nothing new, Celeste dismissed. Something like that always happens just before founding day. It's because our memories are at their weakest right now. It'll get sorted out by the restoration. It always does. How long have you been using your mother's memories for the founding day ceremonies? Eartha asked out of the blue. Celeste sighed, suspecting she knew where her friend's question was going to lead. She gave up staring at the stars to look at Eartha's intense, youthful face. Neither of them had changed in over 14 decades. Like herself, Eartha's aging had been halted somewhere in her early 30s. It's been 152 years since she passed away. If she had lived another 10, she'd be here with us for founding day, Celeste lamented. We were a decade too late developing the anti-senescence treatment for it to work on her. But my mother left us her vision. It's why we're still here and thriving. Yes, I'm going to use her memories, like I do every year, to remind us that we need to stay the course. Celeste patiently explained, turning away, hoping to avoid the argument that had begun to drive a wedge between them. You can't just keep doing the same thing year after year, Eartha protested. 
Celeste braced herself for the rest of the now all too familiar rant that as of late had come to dominate their conversations. Breakwater was never intended to be completely isolated from the rest of the world, Eartha insisted, moving to block Celeste so she couldn't walk away. Our resources are limited, we're beginning to exhaust them after two centuries. You've got to accept that things change, Celeste, like the snow on the mountains, and we need to adapt. A 200-year-old vision is just that. It addresses old problems, not our present ones. It's still relevant, Eartha. I'm not in the mood for this, Celeste growled, sidestepping her friend to head for the exit. The following day, Casimir was already waiting in the memory repository when Celeste arrived. He was the only surviving founder of Breakwater and a close friend of her mother. Almost two decades younger than the founding matriarch, he had been the first person to have his genetics altered by anti-aging modifications and was also the first to discover the trade-off involved. As a result of the anti-senescence gene mods, the bonds between neurons in the brain of the modded individual weakened, which caused long-term memory loss. No one had found a way to fix the problem other than regularly recording and restoring the neuron patterns containing their memories. The anti-aging mod hadn't worked on people older than 60, so Celeste had to witness her mother slowly decline and finally pass away. However, her mother had lived long enough to have her memories captured by the neuron pattern recorder and storage system Casimir had developed. Everyone in Breakwater who was young enough accepted the life extension and used his repository to restore their memories once a year on founding day. It's great to see you. Casimir started to stand up to greet Celeste. And you, she agreed, placing a hand on his shoulder. Really, there's no need to get up. No offense, but you're looking your age today, Casimir. Do you mean 58? Or 258? He joked as Celeste settled into a chair across from him. You look tense. What's up? he asked. I'm not sure, Celeste admitted after a moment. Do you think it's possible memory fade may have sped up? Why? You invented the restoration process so you would know, right? Casimir placed his elbows on the table, steepled his hands and leaned forward. Is there a problem? I don't know. It just seems there's more discontent than usual before a restoration. Interesting. Casimir mused. We take scans every year on founding day. The decay rate hasn't changed since we discovered the problem, so a year between restorations is still the optimal interval. There's... Nothing I should be concerned about, Celeste finished his sentence. You're probably right, but it still seems worse than usual. It's Arcology 7, isn't it? Casimir nodded thoughtfully. I looked at their scans from last year. Nothing changed. Their long-term memory is fading at the same rate as all of us. That may be so yet, they seem to have forgotten why we need to keep isolated, Celeste hesitated, then added. I'm worried they'll do something stupid before founding day. Casimir leaned back in his chair, folding his arms across his chest. Well, we could move up the restoration, he suggested after a minute. I'd need to think about that, Celeste said. I'd like to keep things as they've always been. And we would, Casimir agreed. It would be done at night when people are asleep, and if we edited everyone's scan, they would remember the restore is always happening a month before founding day. So it would be as if nothing had changed, he grinned. You can alter scans? Is that something new? Celeste asked in surprise. It's always been possible in a limited way, Casimir explained. Editing only works on small details, like the memory of a specific event. And that's what we're talking about here, just moving up the date of the restoration by a month. We would still celebrate Founding Day like we have for the last 200 years, and you would still give your mother's inspirational speech. That's the highlight of Founding Day, of course. Did you know she was the only billionaire who used her wealth to help more than herself? There's what? Over a hundred thousand people in Breakwater? I am proud to have been her friend and sad that she wasn't young enough to be modified. Like you, I know the only way this community will survive is to follow the isolation plan and keep the wall closed. We share that goal. Celeste stared at the man she had trusted all her life, shocked by what he had just revealed. Up to that moment, she had assumed recorded memories were indelible. 
Their immutability was the reason everyone had volunteered to be modified and have their long-term memories stored. If stored memories could be altered even a bit, Celeste's world began to feel like it had been built on shifting sand. But I would know, right? she questioned. Once we're all restored, the edit would simply be fact, Casimir explained. Shared experiences such as restoration and founding day are pooled to save space in the repository, so when I edit the memory it will be changed for everyone, including you and me. I can assure you no one will know it was ever any different. Celeste shifted uncomfortably in her seat. She started to see Casimir in a different light and wondered if he had ever done something like this before or if accepting his suggestion would open the door to more edits. But then again, neither of them would know there had been a change, she rationalized. So what harm could it cause? I don't feel comfortable with it, she admitted after a long silence. But then, if it will stop what's happening in Arcology 7. But before we resort to something so radical, I want to go over there and see how close they are to taking action independently. I don't want to set a precedent we might regret later. Of course, Casimir agreed, but Celeste could tell he thought they should go ahead with the edit. It would be better to stick to tradition, he agreed. You will still need your mother's memories to do the annual address. We should do that now while you're here. They'll help you to say the right thing to convince Arcology 7 to come into line. Celeste said nothing. Come on, he encouraged. We have your mother's scan pulled and ready to go. You can do it right here. I... I could come back, she offered hesitantly, then feeling foolish for letting her newfound doubt overtake common sense, she agreed. The numbers don't lie, just look at the production figures, the head agriculturalist complained at a meeting two days later. The soils in the valley are nearing exhaustion. We need another source of minerals and fertilizer. There were murmurs of agreement in the crowd that had gathered to meet with Celeste. She was beginning to regret coming to Arcology 7. None of them were listening to her. I can't allow that. It means opening ourselves to the outside, she pointed out. And that would expose us. The whole point of breakwater is to shelter us from... She paused mid-sentence when she realized she didn't remember why they had closed themselves into the valley 200 years ago. She quickly recovered and added, To shelter us from the environmental and economic collapse, she said, picking a generic but likely-sounding culprit. Going outside the valley will threaten everything we have built here. She stopped and glared at each person, challenging them to contradict her. My mother, our founder, told us, she began, but the words didn't flow. They were only gray, shapeless, half-formed ideas at the back of her mind which refused to come into focus. She told us to, to stay the course. It wasn't what she had wanted to say. It lacked the emotion, laser-like logic and credibility of her mother's argument. Celeste stopped and tried to recall the words again, but something else came back, something decidedly wrong. When Celeste noticed the group staring at her, she made an excuse and left. What happened? Are you okay? Eartha asked as she chased Celeste down the hall outside the meeting room. Celeste suddenly stopped to face her friend. No, I'm not okay. I can't recall my mother's ideas. In fact, I can barely remember her, so I'm not okay. I thought you had reloaded those memories when you met with Casimir. I did. This has never happened before. It's like there are two faded sets of memories in my head now, and they contradict each other. I should probably tell Casimir, maybe get him to do another restore. I don't think doing another one so soon would be good for you, Eartha advised. Give it a few more days for the memories to reestablish themselves, then decide what to do. But those people back there, they need to be convinced, Celeste protested, starting to turn back. It will be okay, Eartha insisted. Breakwater won't fall apart because a few people want to open the wall. Celeste was about to disagree, but she decided she needed to find out why her memories had failed before she could do anything about the dissenters. So she gave up and allowed her friend to drag her to the train that connected the Arcologies. The next day as she waited for Casimir in the repository, Celeste checked her handheld for messages. 
She had expected to find reams of complaints about her erratic behavior and refusal to open the wall, but oddly there was nothing, not even the usual griping about resource shortages. What brings you here? Casimir asked, apparently surprised she had come back to the repository. I mean, it's always nice to see you. It's just that I wasn't expecting you until a week before founding day. Celeste stared at him in confusion. You know, for our annual appointment to reload your mother's memories, he reminded her. We've already done it, Celeste corrected, wondering how he could have forgotten. I came here to talk to you about what happened to me at yesterday's meeting in Arcology 7. His cheery demeanor immediately evaporated. He sat down across from her, then read something on his handheld before looking up. Sorry, I just needed to check a message. Tell me what happened. It's my mother's memories, Celeste began. I wanted to use her experience of the first founding day to convince the dissenters, but I couldn't recall any of it, and that doesn't make sense. You helped me restore her memories three days ago. The words should have been on the tip of my tongue. Casimir shifted around as if his chair had suddenly become uncomfortable. I couldn't explain why we originally isolated breakwater, and that's crazy, Celeste explained. So I ended up walking out of the meeting. That made them incredibly angry. There should have been all sorts of buzz around it. But I can't find anything about the incident. What do you make of that? No one remembers because I went ahead and did a mass restoration last night which edited the event out, Casimir informed her. But something must have gone wrong. You shouldn't remember it either. I have your personal memory image in the queue. We should reload it right now. He tapped his handheld, looked at her expectantly, and waited. Celeste instinctively touched the back of her neck just below her hairline, where her memory transceiver was. Everyone in Breakwater had one. She felt a tingle at the base of her skull, and knew Casimir had initiated a restore without her consent, but there was nothing she could do. Celeste closed her eyes and waited for the overwhelming flood of old memories to pour in, but instead they rushed through her mind without sticking. She waited another few seconds, then opened her eyes to find Casimir scrutinizing her. Is everything okay? he asked. I always look forward to loading your mother's memories every year. Celeste opened her mouth to tell him the restore had failed again. Then something stopped her. Why was Casimir acting as if nothing had just happened? I'm fine, she said pretending she was unaware of the fact he had just tried to overwrite her recent memories. So everything went okay? He asked again anxiously. Can you tell me about the time your mother and I first met? Panic gripped Celeste. She couldn't remember the meeting and didn't want him to know. She tried to steady her voice as she replied. I, I'm fine, Casimir. I need to go. I'll set some time aside so we can talk about my mother's memories of you another day. Without waiting for a response, she got up and left. Celeste let out a sigh of relief when the elevator door finally closed. She had been half expecting Casimir to stop her. He had never acted without her agreement before. Not knowing where else to go, she headed up to the level where Eartha lived. It was creepy, Celeste said, looking out the window of Eartha's quarters. He did a mass restoration last night without consulting anyone, then did another one on me without asking. After he tried to grill me about my mother's memories, I pretended everything was all right and got out of there as fast as possible. Restoring long-term memories doesn't affect short-term recall, right? Yes, that's what we've always believed, Eartha agreed. Come on, sit down. I've got something I need to share with you. Celeste turned away from the window, still rattled by her experience. Something's wrong, isn't it? She asked, taking a seat beside her friend. I'm not sure, but you're not the only one to have a restore fail, Eartha admitted. Mine didn't work last year. I haven't said anything because my memories stayed the same. I mean, they didn't fade away like we're told, and as time went on, other memories started coming back. Memories that were not in the repository. Odd things, like being with my parents when I was young and meeting a group of people who weren't from Breakwater. Guess who was part of their group? Casimir. That means he's not a founder. He came from the outside after it was built. Why didn't you let me know, Celeste said angrily. I was too afraid to tell anyone. Would you have believed me before today? Probably not, Celeste admitted. 
But when you told me about what just happened, Eartha said, I knew I wasn't the only one having restore failures and knew you would believe me. I was awake during the mass restoration last night. It was like I could choose to reject the memories being forced into my head. When I talked to my connection in Arcology 7 this morning, they didn't remember us being there yesterday. It was like the day hadn't happened, and no one seemed concerned about the resource shortage anymore. They told me it was ridiculous to think there was one. Celeste's face turned ashen. Casimir admitted to me that minor details in memory scans can be edited. He probably wasn't concerned about telling me because he was going to force a restore with an edited scan on me, but if that's true... You wouldn't know that your memories had been changed. None of us would, Eartha said, completing the thought. Something caught her eye near the door to her quarters and she froze. Celeste twisted around and saw Casimir leaning against the wall. You left so abruptly, he said, feigning concern. I was worried about your health, so I followed you here. The door was unlocked and I let myself in, and it appears my concern was justified. You've no right to be in here, Eartha protested. When something goes wrong with a restore, I have a moral obligation and the authority to do what I can to correct it, he said, glaring at Celeste. Your mother may have had the resources and vision to build breakwater, but she wasn't willing to do what was needed to hold it together. I do, and I have been doing just that for the last 150 years. If your mother was still around, breakwater would have been polluted by the outside long ago, so it was unfortunate she was too old for the treatment. He winked and pushed off the wall, then positioned himself to block the door. I keep the memory edits subtle, nothing too significant from year to year. In the case of your mother's memories, I only changed a few key facts to make it appear she wanted us to stay detached from the rest of the world. But there's always one or two people who, for whatever reason, seem to develop an immunity to the restoration process. By keeping the changes small, they don't immediately suspect what has been going on. That gives me time to locate them and deal with the problem. Casimir pulled a small rod from his pocket and pointed it at Celeste. And yes, it's true, I wasn't part of the original group that built Breakwater. I had to buy my way into your mother's sheep pen and couldn't afford another wolf in the valley. There's been a few, but with an edit here and an edit there. He smiled insincerely, then pressed a button on the rod. Celeste woke to find herself lying beside Eartha on a grass-covered hill. Head still spinning, she managed to prop herself up on her elbows. They were a few hundred meters beyond the great end wall that closed off the valley from breakwater. Her first instinct was to rouse Eartha, hike back to the wall and try to find a way back in. Instead, she looked in the other direction and could just make out a road leading away and instinctively knew that was where they needed to go. They would be back one day, once they had the resources to expose the lies and tear down the wall. Then breakwater could move on, just the way her mother had envisioned. Makeshift Stories is released around the beginning and middle of the month. This month's story was written by Alan V. Hare and read by Kathleen Connolly. Opening and closing themes composed and recorded by Matthew Erdman. Audio production and editing by Makeshift Studios. You can support the podcast by heading over to kodashfee.com slash makeshiftstories and make a one-time donation to help us offset costs. You also can help us out by getting your friends to subscribe or follow wherever they listen to audio. If you'd like to connect with us, please send an email to makeshiftstories at gmail.com or visit our website at makeshiftstories.com. Links to both are in the show notes. Makeshift Stories is released under a Creative Commons non-commercial attribution, no derivative license, which means you are free to share our stories. Just remember to credit us and don't alter anything. <laughs>